Hi, we're here today at wonderful Docklow Pools near Hereford. The place is absolutely full of fish. But like all places this time of year, things go a little bit funny. The leaves falling off the trees and the fish go funny. So what I've come to do today is come to show you how to get the most out of your peg with waggler fishing. A really great method this time of year. Catch fish like that all day long. Waggler fishing is really easy. So simple, tangle free ways of catching fish on the float. And this is just a really, really easy, simple setup. The waggers I'm using are loaded Garbolino two and a half grams, but you can go, go to two and a half, three, four grams, whatever you need for the conditions. The setup itself is quite simple. Um, a little bit shot down the line. There's two different rigs here. One I've set up so that it's to fish full depth. So I can fish a little bit of bulk down, set the float and sit and wait. The other one is to fish on the drop or shallow if the fish come up off the bottom and catch them much better with these. But what I'd like to do is show you exactly how I set this up. Really simple and quick to do. And it's, as I say, it's a tangle free method. I'm using a set of Garbino Essential rods. Basically, I've got a 13 foot medium setup. That's the one I use when I'm fishing the wagger on the bottom. It gives me a little bit more control. And it, it means if I want to put um, a heavy hook length on or a bigger hook, fish a bigger bait, sometimes meat here, for example, works really well. I can do that with this slightly more substantial rod. It's a great all round rod, teamed up with a, one of the gold reels, a three and a half thousand size, just a three pound main line. Very, very simple setup. The, the other rod is a much softer rod. This is a 12 foot, it's the, the, our, what we call our super light and it's a perfect rod for fishing up in the water when you're catching mixed species. When you, when you lift up into that fish, when you strike, and you don't know whether it's going to be a big F1 or a carp or a roach or a chub, then this rod will help you. It'll just give you that cushion that you need. As, as it picks up, it'll fold over and you can fish light lines to catch all kinds of fish. Very, very good setup that. And I was always err on the side of softness rather than uh, rigidity when, you, when you're fishing mixed fisheries like this. So let me go through the actual setup. So what I've got, first of all, I've got one of these two and a half gram float with an insert. I can change those inserts, no problem. I've got three or four different size inserts. So if I want finer, thicker, orange, yellow, black, anything I can do that. But Normally, what we would do is we'd just use a normal insert, a normal um, attachment on here, or just throw this on the line. The best way is to use this kind of thing. These, these are like what we call quick feeder waggler rigs. So simple, they come in a little grommet and they're set up with um, quick stops and a swivel on them. So basically, all I have to do, and I can show you exactly what I'm doing now, that rig is ready to go there. I just get the main line, slide it on like that, move the quick stops up, there's one above it and, and three below, and all that does is just gives you the ability to move your float up and down the line, and you can see there that is actually set up on the line. I can put the float straight on with the American snap on the bottom, makes it very, very easy to um, fit. And it means there that rather than in the old days, we would use shot and, you know, these days we've, we've, we've got to use non-toxic shot in big sizes. You don't need to use any shot around your float here. This setup is designed so you can have the maximum amount of loading on your float and the minimal amount of shotting on your line. I can build up as much shotting as I need in number eights, number tens, number elevens, whatever I need. It's only shallow here, I've only got four and a half foot of depth, so basically I don't need much shot down the line. So most of my shotting will be in a couple of number eights here, and maybe tens, maybe one eight and two or three tens down the line. Very, very simple. Now the other thing that I use is the Garbino quick attachment for hook links. That is a tiny little swivel with a rubber grommet and a hook on. And it's so, so simple to attach this. You can attach it however you want, but I tend to do um, just a standard turnover lasso rig. Put it through three or four times. Slide it down. Like that. And then, that is ready. You can see there, 
to actually attach your hook length to. The only thing I haven't put on the line is the micro shot, but what I would do, if I've got a little bit more time, I'd put those on before I put the quick stop on there and just put the two or three on there, slide them up with wet fingers, bite that little bit of line off that I've used and the job's a good one. It's absolutely perfect. Hook length on the end. Hook length size, around 300 mil I tend to start off with on, on these. It's a good it's a good size, good length of hook length because I can put a shot onto the bottom there. If I'm getting lots of quick bites, I need to move some lead closer to the to the hook and I prefer to put a shot on the hook length rather than have this little um, quick stop as my final weight because um, a little micro shot of a, an 11 or 12 works much better. See, I've, I've just attached that there. Just works absolutely perfectly well. So about 300, 320 mil is perfect for the hook length. And what I do is just transport them back in on EVA spools. I can use them for feeder fishing. I can use them for, for waggler fishing, stick float fishing, whatever I want to do. If, if you put them on sort of um, 600 size and you want to use them at 300 just fold it over in half and tie a loop on there and you've got a 300 mil piece it makes makes it's much more efficient carrying them like that than carrying lots and lots of different lengths but that's basically the setup there i've got one of our uh, uh, winter silvers hooks on there galbino ones these are perfect nice wide gape and get a caster on double maggot or a worm head which has been good today as well um through loose fed caster but that's very, very simple rig. I can move everything up and down without worrying about damaging the line. I can fish shallow, I can fish deep, and in seconds, I can move it down, and that will not move. Will not move at all until I want it to. One last point, what I always like to do, I always like to leave a little bit of gap um, above my waggler. One of the most important things is when you're casting, that waggler wants to hang straight down. If it's been held in place by something that's really tight, that's why the swivel works as well, because it helps it hang, then it can go offline. So just with that little bit of a gap there, it just helps you cast much more accurately. So that rig's done, ready to go, needs a two shot on. Very, very simple. Swim choice is really important at places like this, this time of year. I always look for what I would call and it's like fish holding features. Isn't it? This this swim is just an absolute classic. You've got stumps here which always hold fish. There's, there's loads of chub in this venue. Stumps, things like that. Roots hold loads and loads of chub. F1s love features. There's lilies over there. There's reeds here. Stream coming in. There's, there's everything you really want. But if you if you're on a lake where there's no features, there's features underwater, try and find them, try and look for them. Look for ledges, look for gravel bars, look for maybe islands and shelves, anything that will attract fish under the water to hold them there. As I say, as, as the fish go out, they will look for these features and this is just perfect. In terms of bait, my menu is absolutely simple. My, my mainstay today is maggots and casters. I've got two pints of red maggots, which is the sort of bait that I will use on a hard day. I'll start feeding some casters, fish maggot on the hook, feed to response, you know, feed your casters, feed your casters. Hopefully the fit will draw the fish in. The good thing about casters is they're just like pellets in, winter, in summer. Pellets draw fish in from the noise and the fish come to them. Casters have exactly the same sort of thing in winter when, you know, on still days especially, you ping a few casters in, you get that noise, you're not feeding a great deal, but it draws the fish in. Today we've had loads of fish come in, swirling over the bait, and ca catching shallow, and it's been fantastic. So I've left the maggots alone a bit more. But what I have been using, I've been using worm heads on the hook, just li little bits of dendrobina head. What I'll do is I'll nip a tiny little bit of dendrobina off like that and hook it right in the tip. That'll stay on for five or six fish at least. Just increases my catch rate all the time. But, you know, when you when you play fishing, it's great. You can sit there and you can catch all day and enjoy yourself. But if, if, this, if it was in a match today, I'd be keeping an eye on everyone around me. I'd be looking and think that bloke over there, he's caught a carp. And, you know, he's only caught one, but, you know, I'm catching. I've just had a, at least a carp's worth of 
um, eyed and chub very quickly, so I'm all right. But if he starts catching really well, I need to try and understand if there's any carp in my peg or any F1s, any bonus fish, bream, anything like that. And the best way to do it is just to have what I class as a bonus fish bait. And, and today, we're here at Docklow, it's not winter, it's 13 degrees, it's windy, the, the, the water's temperatures have dropped a lot, but it's not winter. The fish are still moving about and they're still actively feeding. Meat is a really great bait for here. And two, two good baits, pretty much anywhere, as long as it allows, meat and corn. They will sort out better fish. The good thing about six mil meat, you can put it in with your casts and ping a bit out all the time. And, and with, you know, add a bit of corn and just drop a bit of corn in. Every now and again, just put a bit of corn on your hook or a bit of meat and it, it might just catch that extra fish. And, and that's how you build your peg and you turn it like a, a silver's bag into a, maybe a match winning bag and your peg will develop and it's easy to do that. You feed meat, the roach aren't going to scare off. The roach will just keep eating the casters. It's a really good way of making things happen in your peg. What's become really evident today, and it, it often happens um, when you're catching plenty of fish and you lose feeding, and you know, some of these fish, look at this. Oh, look at that beautiful roach. Absolutely lovely. Love casters. But what's been really, really important is the way I'm feeding. And fishing. It's very very important to cast past your feed or past where you're fishing and then you've got to you've got to load your catapult. My catapult's loaded ready now. So I'm casting out, dropping it in, straightening the line, feeding short of where I'm I've cast, straightening it out and literally expecting a bite within seconds because I'm fishing right in that feed and that's been most evident. The best way to catch is doing that. If you, if you fish outside your feed, if you fish and then feed too late, then you don't get bites. Every time you feed out, draw back in, just, you know, maybe about, oh, there you go, straight away. As soon as I've drawn into that feed, just makes a massive difference. And it's, my catapult's ready again. I've, I've, I've fed, hooked this fish, again, another great big roach. Uh, I've hooked this fish, my catapult's ready. All I've got to do, put my caster on on my wormhead, which has been the two best baits. And there's lots of fish there, wormhead's good. When it's a little bit iffy, then caster's been good. So cast out, drop it in, feed, draw back, in fact, straight on it, look at that. It's just getting into that routine. And I'm using this time to play my fish now, just to load my catapult. These are too big to swing, really. The net them, but I'm catching roach, eyed, chub, skimmers. No F ones, but you know I've tried up in the feed, and it's not made any difference. So it's just um, the more feed I put in, then it just makes it a bit iffy. I'm better off just. Fishing and feeding, catching so out, feed, look at that, straight away. That was past my feed though there, so there's a lot of fish at the moment. A smaller fish, the, the bigger fish are definitely in my feed. Little chublet, great variety of fishing this is. Fast and furious, and it's um, really, really good fun as well. I've had a lovely day here today, look at this. Ah, swinging roach, look at that. So, I've basically given you all the details of how I set my waggler up. Very, very simple. Um, nice way to do it. I've told you how I feed it, what baits are used, how to catch a bonus fish. Very, very simple, very straightforward things that you can do. Docklow has never, ever let me down. I've never had a bad day here. If you're in the area, if you're somewhere around, if you can afford a couple of days off, get yourself over here. You will, you will not be disappointed. You catch fish on every lake, on any method. It's a beautiful place. If you can't get here, get out to your local lake, get the waggler out, practice the things that I've told you about, and you won't fail to catch fish. It's a fantastic method any time of the year, but especially as autumn arrives.